today I would like to discuss Bonke's teaching, Bonke Zen. According to D.T. Suzuki, Bonke was perhaps one of the most important Zen masters in Japanese history. He lived in the 17th century, had Kensho came to it seems full awakening and in the latter part of his life was a truly original teacher. He oversaw uh, the teaching of many monks and lay persons alike. The heart of Banke's teaching, so simple, so straightforward, so evident from the Buddha and from the Heart Sutra is this. Abide in the unborn Buddha mind. He said, everything is resolved in the unborn. For many of us, there is a sense of wandering about the world in search of who we truly are. From the beginning, that search is a search for home. And the sense we may have of living here is that we are not at home. Therefore, doubts arise, miseries are experienced. Sometimes the path seems fruitful, at other times futile. Thus, when Banke says, everything is resolved in the unborn. We should listen. The unborn is prior to conception, prior to imagination, prior to sense experience. In this sense, the unborn is our original face. It is odorless, shapeless, tasteless, inaudible, invisible, even unnameable. And yet verily it is as tangible, as concrete, and as close as anything could be. Banke's chief teaching then was simply abide in the unborn, even simply abide as the unborn Buddha mind. This also means realize that every phenomenal experience is the arising, temporarily so, of the unborn. 
how effortless is hearing, sensing, tasting, touching, and seeing. How effortless does thought spontaneously arise. In our alleged or apparent exile, we forget the simplicity, the dynamic, spontaneous effervescing of the unborn in all experience. Hence, the one speaking right now is the same as the ones who are hearing right now. And the hearing is nothing but the ordinary yet magnificent expression of the unborn. We seem to fall into exile from our true unborn home, Benkai states time and again, whenever we appear to switch or change the unborn for some false identity, some concrete, apparently essential sense of self. Whenever we do this, we get caught in our own mental concoctions, our own story. And they seem so compelling because they seem to keep repeating themselves in this form or in that one. Out of his wonderful compassion, Banke simply says, let all of these thoughts and emotions and stories come forth. And what he means is that we need to stop as seekers, as meditators, bringing even a hint of resistance to any experience coming right now. When he says, let the thought simply come, what he surely means is that let it come from the no point point of view of the unborn. For the unborn is not only magnificently creative, it is also exceptionally generous and welcoming. If we sense even a hint of resistance to whatever is arising in experience, then we are fighting against the manifestation of the unborn. And in that sense, we are caught up not only in delusions, but also in divided mind. Keep mind unified, he seems to be saying. For Banke, the teaching is exquisitely clear. Simply abide in the unborn. This also means see everything occurring as nothing but the temporary 
effervescence of the unborn. And if you should happen to make mistakes along the way, then simply ease off, let be, and sink back into the unborn. Let us never make the mistake of thinking that the unborn is thinkable. When we hear the word unborn, now or in one of his texts, we should realize that this is not something we should be thinking about. We shouldn't be asking ourselves, what is this unborn? As if we could somehow comprehend it through the movement of thought alone. Rather, being quiet we open up eternally to the supreme, tangible simplicity of the unborn. We recognize its divine presence right here and now. 